with boldness, let us, let us approach the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace as a timely help. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My friends, as we gather here for this Holy Mass, let us begin first by taking a moment to acknowledge our sins. And in so doing, we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts, that he may give us a mind pleasing to you, and graciously conform us to your will. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some were Pharisees, so he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, the dispute broke out between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, or angels, or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. The dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into the compound. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me Keep safe, safe, O God, God. You, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Keep, Keep me, me safe, safe, O God, you, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me, even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path of life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Alleluia, Alleluia. 
Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me, and that you loved them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world, Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known, that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Maybe some of you are familiar with this passage from the Acts of the Apostles today. Paul's been arrested. He's in Rome. And he's brought out before the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And I want you to imagine, well, or call to mind, any time you've ever seen a trial on television, or perhaps even you've been part of one as a juror or even uh, in the witness area or the, you know, the public area. Oftentimes, even if somebody is really, really obviously guilty, he or she will have all kinds of supporters there. Maybe not a lot, but some. People who go there, even if somebody has committed a crime because they love the person nonetheless and they go there to show support or maybe they think they're innocent or whatever it may be. Oftentimes when someone's on trial, they don't find themselves completely, completely alone. And yet with Paul, he is quite alone. Maybe he's alone in a similar way to how Jesus was alone. Paul, if you can imagine, is in a foreign city. He's in Rome. He's not from Rome. He's from Tarsus, which is like part of Greece, I think. And he's arrested by the Roman authorities. So he's a prisoner. And he's brought before the Sadducees and the Pharisees. So he's brought before, he's, he's looked at with malice on three different fronts, the Romans, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees. And I can imagine Paul being brought forward like that must have felt, perhaps the temptation was to feel alone. I don't know how many of his friends or co-workers or Christian disciples were, were there with him, but he's spoken in other parts of scripture about being abandoned when he was arrested. 
And I can't remember if this is the arrest that he was referring to. But he's there before everyone, completely and utterly alone, and there's a, a feud and a fury that's whipped up, and it's almost by his own choosing, because in the Jewish time there were factions just like there are in the church today, just like there are in our political sphere as well. The Sadducees only held to the Pentateuch, which is the first five books of the Old Testament, where, and they only believed what was in those first five books of the Pentateuch. And the Pharisees, however, believed in angels, they believed in the resurrection of the dead, they believed in eternal life. And uh, the, the, the Sadducees didn't have that developed belief, and so they were always at odds with each other. And so Paul, in order to kind of create a little bit of a division, to kind of create a little bit of a stir, says, I am a Pharisee like you. And that immediately gets the Sadducees even more angry, but it gets the sympathy of the Pharisees. So they kind of turn against each other. And I look at this whole thing, and certainly Paul is a true believer. Certainly Paul is a deep believer. So I want you to take that whole scenario and I want you to listen to just a few lines from the gospel that I just read. Jesus, is, his eyes are lifted to the Father, and he's making that prayer, that beautiful, beautiful prayer in John's gospel in chapter 17. And he's praying to the Father that they may all be one. As you are, Father, in me, and I in you, that they may be in us. I in them, and you in me. And he goes on to say, I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. And so over and over and over, Jesus repeats that he wants to be in us, that he wants to be in Paul, that he wants to be in us, and he wants us to be in him and the Father, so that we all may be one, one with the Holy Trinity and one with all believers. And that's what baptism does. It makes us one body. And we believe this fundamentally in our faith. And if we say we believe this fundamentally in our faith, and we know this and we live this and we have an experience of God's presence in us, then we can look at Paul, even though he's on trial, even though he's afraid for his life, even though it seems as though the whole world has turned against him, we can look at him and say, yes, but he's not alone. Never alone. Certainly in our life we have times of loneliness. Certainly in our life we have times of isolation. Maybe some of us with this whole coronavirus are feeling it more than usual. Certainly we have all of these experiences but if we really, truly know and believe that God is with us, we will never feel utterly alone. We will never have that loss of hope. And so let us turn in accord as one body. And it was Brother Lawrence. I don't know if you've ever heard of Brother Lawrence. He had a very, very well-known practice. He called it practicing the presence of God. He had this gift of being able to live every moment of his life aware of how present God is to us, whether it's in our, in our moments of triumph or whether it's in our moments of sin and despair. He never abandons us. He is with us always. And so let us take heart in that. Let us take courage. Let us be faithful and let us remember that Jesus truly is with us and we are in him. And no matter the worst hardened sinner, he never abandons them. He didn't abandon Peter. He didn't abandon Judas. He didn't abandon all those other disciples who fled at his crucifixion. And he certainly doesn't abandon you and I. Even when we falter, he's with us in our victories, and he's with us in our defeats. Amen. And God bless you.
And so my friends, united in one body, we turn now to God our Father. Let us lift up our hearts and lift up our prayers to our Father. Let us pray that through the church's faithful announcement of the gospel, God's word may spread throughout the world and redeem all pain and suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that people in need may find help and the help that comes from God alone, and that peace and security may be firmly established everywhere. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that during this time of coronavirus and in spite of our isolation, our parish community may grow in faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the poor, the lonely, the unemployed, and all who are disheartened in any way, that they may find consolation and peace in the love and presence of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the grace this week to rejoice even when we share in the sufferings of Christ and to glorify God in all that we say and do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for Alice and Leo Rose, for whom this Mass is offered. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those intentions which we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, you never abandon us, and you unite us in a mysterious and eternal way, and you make us co-divine. Hear our prayers this day. And help us, Lord, to receive and believe and to have the light of faith and to know that we are truly one with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for it. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, 
Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy those who are said, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A history of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. To tell you the truth, it is for your good that I go. For if I do not go away, the paraclete will not come to you, says the Lord. Alleluia. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, enlighten us by the instruction they bring, and restore us through our participation in them, that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to you.